demonstration here. Okay. Sorry, I'm recording. No, that's okay. That's <laughs> so what we'll do, uh, first thing on the agenda, call the order. We've got that. Uh, those present, maybe what we can do is go around the room and hopefully, Liam, you can capture names of who's here because we've yeah, got quite, quite an assortment of people here today. So maybe we can start with the committee people. Uh, committee people who want to introduce yourselves and Marvin, you want Marvin to Gates. So. Dan Granada. Uh, Liam Erickson, Secretary. John Hamill, Town Council Liaison. And I'm doing a lot of that. And then we have some special guests who are joining us. So if you each one want to join, you want to introduce yourselves. And... Uh, Todd Souza, Director of Community Services. Josh Roy, Chief Plan Operator, Scott Sanitary Listing. Well, Richard Bondi, Conservation Commission. Angela Blanchard, the town engineer. And uh, we have Robin on the phone. Yeah, Robin Saunders, I'm on the Long Range Planning Committee, former planning board member and um, uh, resident of Scarborough. Excellent. All right, so um, as far as the agenda, got a couple things from old business, new business. We're going to juggle things around here, I think, just in the interest of the people we have here so we can get through the, the reason that they're here. So uh, why don't we just go ahead and we'll do the minutes first and then we'll just jump into the, uh, the new business portion of this. We have minutes from December 13th. I'm sure everyone's had a chance to review them in great detail. Any, uh, there's Vinny. Hey guys. All right, Vinny's here. Excellent. This is quite the turnout. What's that? This is quite the turnout tonight. Must be hot topics. There are always hot topics. It's one of those hot meetings. Um, Motion to approve the minutes. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? All right. Motion to change. Do we have to make a motion yeah. to do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I can make that motion. Yeah, you can make motion. All right. I'm going to make a motion then uh, to, to adjust the agenda based on the people we have present. Uh, one of the topics we have under new business is discussion of town responsibility regarding testing of the coastal waters, uh, motion to move that to the first topic that we cover. Um, second, second. All right. Discussion? Well oiled machine we have here. All those in favor? All right. So without without further ado, uh, Marvin, you want to kind of kick this off? And I'm not quite, quite sure where we should start. Uh, best way to do this? We have repeated discussions during the summer. Uh, in and around the time of the accident with the sanitary district. And after that, for uh, prone to exaggeration, but I would say at least a couple of months past even the 30 day moratorium on fishing or clamming, that sort of thing. And then it's 20, 21 days is what it was to the state. Yeah. And this, and my esteemed colleague here uh, brought to our attention uh, somewhat informally through your own testing that you yeah uh, just you know the Bailey's Lobster Pound has a clam cleaner inside and it has to be tested weekly so that we can put our clams in there and be sanded and stuff. Uh, in doing so, I have to send them water in the tank, water out of the tank. That goes to uh, Booth Bay Harbor, where it's tested. They tell me what's in the tank. Tell me what's. And over the course, I'm just going to skip through my little introduction and yeah. we'll get back. The uh, over the course of uh, two or three months, we meet monthly. Uh, it the subject of who the question, who's responsible for testing? I mean, this is the Coastal Waters and Harbor Advisory Committee. Who's responsible for testing the waters? We had some high results. Uh, and not to be disparaging to myself or the committee, I don't think we had an answer as to who's responsible. We had we had some start fits and starts, maybe the state, maybe I don't know who I'm the, I'm the last, I'm not the technical person member of this committee by any long shot. And uh and as a result of that, the way, and please correct me, everybody, I would summarize is as the Coastal Waters and Harbor Committee, we should at least have a good answer to that 
as far as who's responsible for testing the waters, Scarborough waters, so that if someone were to approach us and say, we have an issue, what should we do? We'd like to not look like, you know, like we have no idea what we're talking about. That's, I'm sure there's a better way of putting it, but that's the reason. And then in our October meeting, or was it our November meeting, pardon me, we took a motion to invite guests, esteemed guests who we thought would be able to provide us answers. Um, or we look for a volunteer, that motion passed, look for a volunteer to uh, organize it, so to speak, send out the emails. I was on Zoom, I didn't realize I raised my hand and <laughs> the rest is history. And we really appreciate very much. I appreciate personally the way that you responded to my emails. And uh, I'm very grateful to everyone for being here. And that's just myself and on behalf, I'm sure I, I'm sure I speak for the committee. Yeah, and just one thing to add to that, we are an advisory committee. So what we're hoping to get from this, I think, is um, to see if there's any kind of recommendation we need to make to the town council to change things, organize things, something like that. So I think we're kind of doing some fact finding first as far as who does what, how they all, how everything kind of interacts together. And then at some point we may need to make a recommendation on what needs to be done to kind of get everything under control. So. And, and as the person who's been thinking about yeah. this in this way, yes, I think this is a conversation starter. We're not looking, at least I don't think in 30 to 45 minutes, you're looking for answers. That certainly they may be readily available, and that may be an outcome. Sort of getting the ball rolling is the way I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does seem like a pretty complex issue with a lot of overlapping jurisdictions and responsibilities. That you guys can keep it straight, we'll be very impressed. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm done. The other, so, the other concern I think from the committee's level was. There were three different types of, well, there were four types of different. There was water testing going on by community services for one thing. DMR was testing for another. Sanitary disk was testing for another. Vinny's getting water tests of another. And we just want to make sure that whatever we put, put back to the town council, that we, we have a, a very educated, an educated guess of what is being measured by whom so that we're not, when something goes wrong, we're not going like this and finger pointing. So where should we start? Maybe community services? Good place to start or? Sure. Well, I can, I can start. Okay. Well, Todd Cox, if you yeah. want to start, <laughs> yeah, sure. jump in wherever you need me to. But this is um, something we put together. Essentially, the town does a voluntary program um, from Mean Healthy Beaches, and it's more about swimming mm -hmm. at our beaches. And this really lays out kind of the protocol and what we do and um, the consistencies in which we do it um, and why we do it. Sure, <laughs> sure, I hand it around. Um, but I think we can kind of give a higher level, but this will be good, I think, for you guys to refer back to okay. uh, and why we do what we do and what we do. Yeah, I can't take any credit for putting this together. This is well put together. Yep. Um, but the brief over, like Angela said, it's a voluntary program that we've been involved with. Um, I believe there's 60 plus communities, give or take, that are involved in this program. Um, we have either staff or intern staff tasked weekly during a, during a set period of time that goes out and tests at Ferry and at Pine Point, same day, same time, regardless of weather conditions, amount of people on the beach. Mm -hmm. So we have constant data points every time. Uh, Higgins Beach, does the same program, but they do that separately through the Higgins Beach Association. Uh, samples are collected by our staff or intern and then hand off to the Healthy Main Street staff, which are then um, populated. I can never say the, it's like saltwater coli, but it's like Ococci, Intercoxy or something, you know, yeah. that, um, that we're testing for. Um, and, um, when we test, if we get a high reading, I believe it's 104 is the number. So something over 104, we get that usually late afternoon, or early next morning when the tests are. If we are, we go back out and pull another sample the next day and resubmit. Um, I think in my five years here, we probably um, had to resample maybe 
a dozen times, and I think we posted only a couple times advisories. Um, I and I would say out of those advisories, most of them are at Ferry Beach because sometimes you go take that sample and you're standing in six inches of water, um, and so that tide is is really a factor of how much sediment and everything else is coming in with it. So, um, I mean that's pretty much the high level of what we do um, with our program for the three beaches. So we have also a, I'm sorry, Go ahead. we have um, an SOP kind of standard approach on what we do when um, we do get high hits. Um, that's all been vetted through um, now, Main Healthy Beaches is part of, it's been um, folded into DEP. So um, there's checks and balances through that and making sure um, that the protocol we use, not only for the sampling, but how the testing happens is all consistent throughout this. Like she, he had mentioned the 60 communities are, um, that are, are all part of this program. Um, it is focused primarily on, like I had mentioned, swimming activity at the beach or kayaking or people in the water. Um, and so, um, I just wanted to, I guess, point those couple things out and that once we do have a high hit, um, we have a plan in place. So as Todd said, before we get um, a heads up, essentially, before the final results come in that we know we can get back and test. Mm -hmm. um, if that second one, because of things that happen, whether it's a dog standing in the water or other foul in the water doing certain things that give us a spike. The second one really confirms whether it's really a consistent hit or not. And then we have protocol to basically track that down. What is the source? And that's where we kind of work with sanitary district um, when they had the break, or if we need to um, go another route and saying, where are the outfalls? We have our outfalls all inspected and um, mapped. And so we can go and see if someone has connected, say, a washing machine or some sewer discharge. Um, and so we can track that and rectify it and then retest. And that's really, I guess, from my point of view, what kind of happened this summer is we had high hits. We found the issue and retested and then we're we're following that protocol and it seemed to work. Um, so I guess I'd be interested if you guys are seeing, um, curious about a different approach because I, I guess what we're finding is that the, our our system seems to be working, but I would, um, he, I think we're really here to listen to you all to figure out um, what is missing or what is what is the issue that we're trying to, to solve. Um, that's, Do you take it at the same tide cycle? No, you same, same, same time, time same day. time every day of the week. So it's mm -hmm. like Tuesday, 9 a.m. Yeah. And then you go to the next beach. And so by the time you get over there, call it Tuesday, 930. They're on that same routine. So you've got constant data samples versus. And that's why a lot of times when we get hits on that one day, <clears throat> I would say nine out of 10 is because it's low tide. And it does not, you know, the volume of water is not there. And we come back and sample and the tide's risen a little bit on the <laughs> next day. Just this fraction, and it's and it's gone. The other thing that I forgot to mention is we do publicly all the the data is on the website. We do have signs at the beach that are up all the time to say we test healthy main beaches, and then there's little add-on signs like advisory posted. So we do educate the public and um, email and Facebook stuff. So when we do have okay, so. well, I think the bigger issue for the clams. Uh, oysters, those people is more of what's in side the harbor. Yeah, so I was going to ask about that. It sounds yeah. like there's a from the territorial stern, Bailey, yeah. all up Jones Creek. Yep. Uh, up by the Nunsuch oysters, <laughs> and then over the, uh, the Libby River. You know, those are more. Yep. Uh, those are so, harvest areas. So there is also um, that. So that's DMR. They do the testing. Um, a lot of things. Places are inaccessible for us, for one thing, um, that they can reach and, and do this testing. That data, I believe, is also available online um, through those agencies. And um, because we are a regulated community, I will say, as I mentioned before, every pipe that discharges anywhere, we really, that we own or maintain, we track. Um, those ones that are, like you were saying, further in, um, that are not accessible, that's where we rely on the state. 
And we've had more and more issues with more of that regulatory um, pressure from the state to put that on a local municipality, which means more cost, more staff. Um, and so we are trying to keep that at state level. I think we want to make sure we get that data and we are looking at it and seeing what they're doing um, and what they're getting for information, I think is very important. But I'm a little hesitant to take on more responsibility that really, quite frankly, should be the state looking at uniformly. Like one of the advocacy we're talking through um, in Augusta is that we're not the only ones that plant that flats. And so how they're regulating each should be across the board where right. they should be looking at, you know, as yeah. you said, up the coast and be uniform with how they regulate that. Um, because we don't want to put a, a big spotlight on Scarborough and saying, and I'm not saying that's what you're doing. I'm no. saying, um, I think there is a positive aspect in having DMR do that, keep that role, I guess is all I'm saying. And are they doing it? Um, yes. Yeah. So when I report annually out to town of Scarborough, we rely on them and saying DMR is doing that testing. I think the, the biggest misconception is that everybody's doing a different test. That's nobody's nobody's matching. Nobody's bringing it all together. Yeah. Well, no, I do a certain test for bacteria or stuff yeah. in my tank. Yeah. The DMR is doing that thing. Sewer district is doing their thing for fecal bacteria, and the beaches are doing for the. Mm -hmm. You got yeah. You yeah. say I'm yeah. Anyway, so the point is, is that yep. you know, um, there's not there's not one line. There's four lines mm -hmm. going in four different directions. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that that exactly summarizes where we were in my yeah. last meeting. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out what's going on now. Is there also some sort of a seasonality thing with what you guys do? You don't do this yeah. year round, do you? Just during the summer, the summer months. Okay. So that seems like another gap there. So, uh, and I will tell you that, you know, Vibrio is of concern in the summer months, and that just grows in the ocean when the water is up over 67 to 70 degrees. It's there. There's mm -hmm. nothing, nothing anybody can do about it. You know? What is it, Vibrio? Vibrio? Yeah. And that can make you sick if you get it, you know. Is that a kind of bacteria or what is, what yeah. is it? Yeah. Really? It's good to know. So I guess that's where I guess we would it'd be helpful for staff to know what I guess you're trying to accomplish. It sounds like you're you're talking about consistency, um, but I think we are testing for different things because we are looking for different things. Like mm -hmm. our our program, like you said, is through Maine Health Street Healthy Beaches, and it's very specific to. Um, people in the water, right? It's very specific to our beaches. That's why we do it just at our beaches because that is the program that is the requirement. Um, sanitary district obviously has, and I'll let Josh speak to what, why you do what you do. Obviously it's state regulated, it's EPA regulated. Um, and so that's, they're looking for different things. That's when you guys saying, it's like apples and oranges, totally understand that because we're looking for apples and oranges and lemons, right? <laughs> so we're looking for, we have to know what we're looking for. This is what we're looking for with the Maine Healthy Beaches Program. This is what DMR is looking for. This is what the sanitary district is looking for. And so if you guys know, have specific things like you're talking about, there's specific things that you're, you're seeing well, as I'm an about, issue. Uh, less than one part per million in my yeah. tank. Yeah, uh, over the UV lights. Mm -hmm. So it's really everything has to be eradicated out of there, mm -hmm. you know. And then the, the water from the river comes back. Uh, Twenty eight or whatever it was that I gave you the reports from. Uh, uh, it's name of the lab over here in Scarborough. Uh, Katahdin. Katahdin. Yeah. yeah. And then I talked to the state about doing it and let me know what was in there because they have the water, it goes to them. Mm -hmm. And at this time, they weren't allowed to do that. But there was talk about whether they'd be able to in the future, I don't know. And that was where the Department of Green Resources at Ag mm -hmm. in Bay, that's where they left off with it. I mean, because the, the, it's just water and it's in a bag and I have to do it every week. And it's pretty easy to test at that end of the game, you know? Because they have they have to take a temperature test 
when it gets there in the box. That's why I have a dummy bag in there. Yeah. Angelo, when you said that you're looking for suggestions from us immediately, I thought, oh, well, that's why we invited yeah. you to give us suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should say is, and, uh, and and I what, you, what is the perceived problem? What are we trying, what to, are we trying to solve? Yeah, but, yeah, trying that's a good question. I think coordination mm -hmm. is the perceived it's, problem. Okay. And I heard you say that and it's a popular term to talk about silos and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, equally popular seems to break the idea of breaking down silos, and I'm skeptical about that myself because I think silos have purposes of expertise that uh, you can manage. But uh, and I heard you say you don't want to bring too much attention to this because this you want the state to continue doing what they're doing and forgive my butchering what you said actually so i think it's i think the our desire as i understood it is to uh, help us coordinate our understanding of what's going on and if there are any gaps who would be better to know those gaps than the people around this table and if they're not it's working it's a well-oiled machine in three or four or five different parts including the state so be it but uh, maybe after that, provide us not the proof, but just where we can find what we might need to find at any given time mm -hmm. from the various states and local uh, departments. That makes sense. I guess I'll outline what we do with the testing. All our all the testing we're required to do is done on the F1 that comes out of the plant, disinfectant with chlorine and if you don't know, our F1 gets discharged into the waters off the crowd snack. Uh, we are required annually, well, actually throughout the year, we do fecal coliform testing three times a week. Um, from April until October, we have we do a terapoxide testing on our F1. So that's what gets discharged out of the ocean. We do that. Sorry, what kind of testing again? And terapoxide, same thing as all that's what we're yeah. 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 difficult. Well, that's what Todd can't that's what Todd can't do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have no problem with my language. <laughs> so we, we do that for, for half the year. Uh, we do heavy metal testing annually for mercury. Um, every time there's a per permit re renewal, we do toxicity testing. Called wet testing, whole wet one toxicity testing. Um, and that's what we do on F1. What we were doing around the time of the force main breaker after was fecal coliform form. And I grabbed samples at Bird Park, Perry Beach, and um, what's the boat launch? Clay Pits. Or seed uh, landing. Yeah. yeah. And those were the results that I was asking on. Yeah. All our testing, re testing results get sent to the state annually. It's overseen by the DPP and uh, president. So I have a question. So if you get something that's over the limit, then what is, is there any sort of corrective action that you yep. take? What is the remedial yep. action? At that point, it's uh, we have daily we have daily maxes for the amount of coliform that can be on a plate of that big bacteria, the indicator bacteria. Um, we send a report monthly to the state, and if there's a violation, then we deal with them directly with rights by the issue. And my guess is if there's a violation of the penalties, so we have to pay penalties or the- I haven't encountered that since since I've been there, yeah. but yes. It's typically, the, the inspector and the plant operator will work together to solve the problem. It tends to be a process issue at that point, so we work backwards to figure out what the problem is. Can, can I interject for a moment? Can you hear me at all? Yeah, can, you can hear me though? <clears throat> all right, I guess one of the things I forgot to mention is that I'm kind of a Clean Water Act nerd and uh, I really, uh, it's it's sort of my passion. So um, where the what it sounds like everybody's doing is you're all making sure that the tenants of the Clean Water Act are 
are being complied with for the town of Scarborough. For, so from what I hear, I'm hearing all really good things. So if we could break down the Clean Water Act into one sentence, it's that uh, every no one has the right to pollute to the waters of the United States. And um, as part of what Josh is talking about, uh, Josh is talking about an actual permit that the Scarborough Sanitary District has to discharge the effluent after they treat it, all of our waste, as everybody knows, and discharge it. And they have to comply with their permit discharge limits. They have certain discharge limits that they have to meet. And it sounds like they're doing that quite well. Um, the Clean Water Act basically makes sure that <clears throat> the waters of the United States are swimmable, fishable, and drinkable where applicable. So obviously nobody's drinking the marsh water, right? So DMR uh, is making sure that they're fishable and the town through the Healthy Beaches program is making sure that they're swimmable. Okay, so that's why there's different types of sampling that, that needs to be done. And this seems very cut and dry to me. And it sounds like the town is the town in all of our sort of agencies, including Scarborough Sanitary District, are um, complying. I haven't, I haven't heard anything so far that would um, ruffle any feathers or bring any great focus to the town of Scarborough or unnecessary uh, focus to the town that need not be. Um, I, I'd like to hear more about sort of like the force main discharge, because I'm, I'm sure that, um, Josh, you had plenty to do to follow up that was reported to DEP and DMR, correct? Correct. And you have, yeah. a no further, you have a no further action from the state and feds? No further action. <laughs> okay. So I guess I don't understand what the problem is. Well, maybe that's a good question. Do we really have a problem, I guess, is the, the question here. Is it sounds like there's some intersection of responsibilities and um, but everybody's kind of controlling, at least the way it sounds, everyone's kind of controlling their own world. Even Vinny, who's looking at it from a very finite, you know, what he's putting in his restaurant kind of thing. Well, yeah, people are kayaking, they're swimming and they're eating. Yeah. On the same spot. And I'm serving them food from the, the marsh. Mm -hmm. uh, I have two questions. One, one would be, I, I, based on your comment, Robin, you know, I would think that, well, gee, we're in better shape than, than I thought we maybe were. You know, we're, we're gurgling in all those drinks. Uh, so whatever, whatever, you know, act, whatever metaphor you want to use. That, so the, the, the worry I have, though, is that do, it doesn't seem like we have any broad baseline to compare year after year or over time. You know, our, and and if we did, what would that look like? If everyone each in their own little area of responsibility was measuring, if we could put it all together and looked at it as a town, you know, what would it tell us anything? So I'm, I'm interested in primarily from the standpoint of what, is there anything that, um, should, you know, the, the public should know about, number one, and number two, that the policymakers might have to do something about uh, even if it's only just to try to have a, a more comprehensive view of the overall health of our wetlands. And so that that's kind of the kind of question I had coming into it. And that doesn't suggest there needs to be something that we have to do or take as an action. But uh, it just seems like we could be doing these things all each in our own swim lanes and not, you know, not really fully understanding what uh, what's happening. Don, can I can I respond to that? Sure. So, Absolutely. go ahead. Were you going to say something, Angela? I don't oh, want to. Zoom world. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> in order to really look at, <clears throat> you know, sort of a municipal wide, which I I agree with you, Don. I think it would be a great idea to like take a look at sort of um, what our water quality impacts are town wide, and that's part of. The, the MS4 permit that Angela coordinates. That's that's part of the world that Angela works in. And I understand that, you know, in her purview, she's gonna be needing to look at some, some fresh land, so, sorry, fresh water 
upland watersheds, which, you know, mainly all discharge through the marsh. Um, but if we wanted to take a larger broad brush look at that, Don, I would suggest that, that, that we look municipal wide to basically see what's the runoff factor coming down uh, all of the, you know, Willowdale, Millbrook, Nunsuch, Libby, Dunstan, what's the overarching sort of load that's being expressed onto the marsh? Because as you know, Don, I'm a huge proponent of protecting that marsh because it's the town's brand. But it's really hard to compare apples and apples where these where these samples are taken right now without looking at the more comprehensive look at the town's impacts municipal wide. Yeah, and I know, um, I think Margaret had mentioned in one of the emails I saw a train talking about like septic systems was something, that's that's something that we're interested in. community has brought up. And I guess just to kind of jump off what Robin is talking about, that's, that's something that staff has, um, we're required again under the, because we're a regulated community, the MS4 permit um, in our urban impaired streams, which is Phillips Brook and Red Brook, we actually have to do an inventory of, of septic systems to make sure we're not finding failing systems in those. Um, that was a big undertaking, I will say, going through the code files and trying to find the, the older septic systems and then doing those inspections. So I'm not necessarily proposing that, but I think it, it is worth looking at or talking about um, some of the subdivisions. Obviously we had the boom in the nineties um, that those septic systems and looking at that age now, um, many have been replaced, uh, perhaps some haven't, but um, as we look forward and uh, one of the things that we need to do in our next permit year is update some of our water on one of our watershed management plans. And with that, I'm looking at it more of, again, town-wide rather than a watershed. So while we're required to look at Red Brook, um, I think it's an opportunity to look at um, buffers to some of our, our sensitive as um, waterways, right? That all draining to the marsh. And so start putting um, some stream protections around some of these. Um, it gives you that buffer before it's hitting the, the waterways for one thing. It also, um, we were talking about just other opportunities as far as right now we rely on, um, as people have failing systems and they're replacing systems, trying to have a conversation with them on whether or not they can tie into a municipal sewer, which is a preferable route um, frankly, for, especially in a certain watershed that's all draining to the marsh. And so it might be something that, and I'm just, just brainstorming throwing out here at this point, so I don't want you guys to write all this down, but I'm thinking ahead at looking at, is there ordinances that are starting to form in our minds talking about right now, the state requirement is if you're within 200 feet of a municipal sewer and you have a failing system, you, you have to tie in. Is 200 feet the answer? I can tell you our neighboring communities like Saco has a larger, a larger gap. Like, so it's trying to push people towards not spending the money to reinvest on their parcel, but invest in actually the sewer line to connect back to something more permanent. So that's, um, those are things I was thinking of when you, when you bring up septic systems, that's where I go is I could see if, this group is concerned with those type of things, we start looking at ordinance pieces that could help with that. Um, it can help code officers um, kind of push people towards this all, uh, more permanent solution than replacing septic systems that, that may fail over time and contribute to any pollution in the, in the marsh. So um, those are a couple things, the buffers and set, it, there's, but there's many more. And so that's where mm -hmm. I'm hoping as we start in the conversation and updating some of our plans um, this next year, that there'll be some ideas that come from that, that might not necessarily need to be restricted to just the Red Brook watershed. It can be something that we can start talking about down the line. So the water, you know, the main beaches be able to test for the same 
at the railroad trestle? Um, well, they don't have, I guess I don't know. We'd have, we could, we, we could talk to them. I know their program is focused on beaches and that's where about well, I mean, what we talked about swimming. snowball. I agree. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, it's all kind of tied together, but yeah. Yep. I see your point. I see his point too. That it's, you know, it's like the seasonality it, thing. Yeah. You don't think it's a problem in December because there's nobody swimming in December. Not that you don't yep. think it's a problem. But it's something that But you I think with limited resources, yeah. I think it'll be a hard task to get um the state because if we're requesting it, um they would have to do it statewide. So it'd be looking at mm -hmm. the, do they have the resources to do that? I, I doubt it. Uh, if we don't know that there's a problem. Like if there is a if we find a problem that's different and then we chase down what that issue is and rectify it. Um and and that also we rely on our public works crews as they're out there doing um any kind of maintenance on the roads or storm drain systems and any kind of odd things that we find. I, I have conversations with um, patrol officers and fire department talking about when they have spills and different things, but all of those things all contribute because we have a lot of eyes on the road, a lot of eyes out around Scarborough and that's all pieces where we pick up things and say, oh, there's, and even if it might not look like a problem, I just always tell everyone to call me because let's take a look at it. Um, and then we find a lot of things that way. And can, to can I add on to what Angela's saying as well? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so <clears throat> septic systems basically provide food for the E. coli and the enterococcyx. They're what we call nutrients, okay? Nutrients are gonna come from other places too. Nutrients are gonna come from a lot of fertilizers um, and uh, there's a lot of fertilizers that cause the E. coli and the enterococcyx to, to, to explode at really fast populations um, to get Vin those numbers that he's talking about. There's a, there, the other source, I guess, that we should think about and this is not probably not going to be popular in addition to septic systems is <laughs> lawn chemicals because so many people put you know fertilizer and pesticides and things like that on their lawns and let's face it we have a tremendous amount of lawns and residential space being added in the Scarborough Downs which also contributes directly to Scarborough Marsh via Willowdale Brook and Mill Brook, which basically, um, you know, all the residential development is right in between those two, those two brooks there. So as, you know, lawn companies get, get called to additional residences, what Scarborough is what the fastest growing town in the state, right? as we add those residences, we're actually adding nutrients to the water, which are going to make the E. coli uh, numbers jump, which we may be seeing. So in addition to septic, I think we need to think about uh, the, the, the rapid development. See, I told you I wouldn't be very popular. <laughs> no, no, you're bringing up important points. I, I'll, okay. I'll tell you, listening to all this, I'm just kind of wondering, we're the Coastal Waters and Harbor Advisory Commission Committee. And I'm just wondering if water quality is something that's really in our area of responsibility or if there's other committees. We have what, a conservation committee kind of thing? I guess the question is, do we want to take on water quality as an issue or should we be we as a committee be focusing more on the things Ooh. related to the harbor and the waters and facilities and that type of thing? Oh, sir, if I may, I apologize that I don't know you very well, <laughs> but it's right in your name, clean harbors and clean waters. And if you want to have a healthy shellfish industry, you got to mm -hmm. have little to no excess nutrients or else you're going to have issues. No, I, yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be dealing with it. I'm just wondering what we as a committee should be dealing with versus maybe another committee as far as advising the town as to what they should do. Because it's a very okay. important. I can okay. see where we could focus a lot of time on water quality. Is that where we should be focusing our, our time? Or should we be worrying about some of the other things that we've been dealing with as a committee? Understood. Thank you. Yeah. And that's really a question for the committee members, what you guys think about that. 
I think it's a fair question. We haven't really heard from Richard and the sustainability committee. I know that they yeah. used to have a pesticide yeah. committee, right? Uh, which was combined, I think, with with conservation. And conservation. And they don't call it pesticide anymore. Uh, but but I'd be really eager to hear, you know, Richard, if you had any thoughts on that and, and you know where this ought to go. I mean, I have you know some some I mean, there's definitely clearly a need for education and awareness. I mean, we're just I mean, I'm hearing stuff now that I didn't know anything about, mm -hmm. and uh, it does seem to me that the public in general would really benefit from some sort of focus on this to know, hey, did you know that we do these things and we measure, you know, this kind of activity takes place and here's what each little piece does. But I, I'm really interested in trying to hear from, from some of the newer uh, environmental committees, you know, what they think about it and any suggestions. Well, from my brief experience on the Conservation Commission, they're focusing on education. Uh, people who came in from the uh, pesticide group are focusing on education. They're focusing on resiliency. Peter Slavinsky is probably the most famous authority on rising sea levels in Maine. And uh, we're starting a new subcommittee on conservation awareness. So, from my perspective, I'd say that uh, we're not really paying any attention to the question of water quality and monitoring at all at this point. But since you gave me a starting point to talk, I do have one question to ask. So I'm completely new to this. I know nothing. I just walked into the room. I have a feeling there are like this gentleman here. There's a certain finite number of people who are doing water quality monitoring. You can name them all, and you can find all their data on a website somewhere, or five or ten different websites. Uh, I would like to see something on the screen where I could go to all these websites and see all the data for all the years that it's been collected. Or is that not true? I think we can get the data. It's not a matter. I mean, it, that's each data set is held in different areas. <clears throat> Santer District holds their data. Healthy Beaches holds their data. Vinny holds his data. DMR holds their data. But do they post it on the web? Um, do you post that on the Beaches. Beaches. Healthy Beaches does, yes. and probably DMR does at, yeah. a, at a point. I'm sure that yeah. Josh doesn't post it on the web, but we could probably get it if we needed it. Yeah, and then we we. I think it might be on the website. Is it? Because you know, each one, each one of our trustees meetings, our monthly report of operations, okay, is there. Mm -hmm. So that basically shows all the bacteria, all the people, and enterococci. So I'm just looking for a simple map. You can see all the points. You can see who is responsible, why they were monitoring those. You can click on that. You can get present historical data at that particular point. And I'll tell you the term GIS system. I mean, I'm just really impressed with what they're doing with the GIS system. And uh, this is another person task, but uh, it would certainly be a great layer to have on the GIS system. I think. And in response to your question about yeah. does the committee want to take this on? Or not, not the obvious answer to that question is no. You know, mm -hmm. we don't want to do anything more than, in a certain sense. Mm -hmm. But it, in another more serious way, um, uh, in the absence of knowing exactly who you're talking about, as far as the Conservation Commission, doesn't sound as though they're doing it currently. I would say someone should be. And that's not to volunteer ourselves, but at least to keep our toe in the water until mm -hmm. that point at which we know where to offload what we've learned here and uh, and keep it in our yeah. portfolio. So should we think about making some sort of recommendation then? Because I, I do like the idea of having a website where everything is consolidated in one place where you can... You can go to the website and see what's going on from all these different sources of information. It seems like a great idea. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of work for somebody to coordinate all that and make it happen. So it's easy for us to say that. But should, so should we be making a recommendation like that? What, you know, what do you guys think, Don? What's our role in this? I'm trying to figure out what we should be doing. We want to do something. It's an important issue. We don't want it to fall through the cracks. I don't think it's going to be resolved tonight. No. 
That's for sure. I, I think Robin. Lynch. Yeah, I have, I have a so question. I have... Go ahead, so, Robin. Go ahead, Robin. So uh, about three years ago, I embarked on this same journey with the town of Falmouth. I actually helped the town of Falmouth put all their data together, all their water quality data, their marine data, their freshwater data. Um, it's, it's a large project for a consultant to do, let mm -hmm. alone for staff. This is, this, is, uh, this is a whole staff position that we're talking about. If you want to keep somebody on, we're talking about you know, uh, legislating, you know, or asking the town to adopt another whole position. Uh, but in the meantime, you could potentially, you know, make a, I like where you're going with that, um, Mr. Chair, with a recommendation to the, to the town council that someone follow this. And even Marvin, you know, this is a long range, this is a long range issue, you know, so, so maybe it even, you know, goes back up to long range planning. But someone needs to follow, you know, the water quality, not only for the uh, shellfish industry, but, you know, just maintaining our, 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 uh, our marsh. But I, I'd be glad to um, show you folks what I did for the town of Falmouth. I'm not necessarily interested in reproducing that or, or giving you all a proposal to do that. I'm not really interested <laughs> But um, I, I can definitely show it to Angela and others to it. It's it's a monumental task to put your arms around this. And then it's a snapshot. And then keep, yeah. And then keep, yeah, it, keep it updated. Well, it's just different data sources. It's yeah. It sounds yeah. easy, but it's never easy. And I thought Angela hit the nail on the head along with Robin and her various comments regarding septic and the yes. direction you described as a possibility and uh, perhaps an inevitability. We, the yeah, last yeah. thing we want to do is ignore everything and run into a quagmire, no pun intended. Like well, my all, all I can say is, I, like it, we were talking about originally, we're, we're kind of all there's essentially three of us entities that are, are looking at specific things because this, um, our goal, right? This is what our mission is, is to solve for this or to test for that. Um, but that can all be, um, I think we could make it a little easier to track, to follow, like we could provide websites and things like that. I mean, there's some minor things I think we could do, but um, I would just say that each of these entities including Main Healthy Beaches, is reporting through <laughs> permitting, right? So there's permitting requirements like the sanitary district that if things go off or high levels, there's alarms, there's bells, there's whistles. It's not unwatched. I guess that's what I, I would just like to, to point mm -hmm. out. It's not that um, we need a watchdog to kind of necessarily look over it. It's because each of us has our has their own kind of entity. And, really, realistically, the umbrella is EPA that's always looking over all of this and then DEP and the branches in the DEP. Um, so I would say it's not being ignored. And as if issues come up, it's not being, it's not a silent sure. hidden thing. Um, it's definitely something that is brought to, I would think at that point, it, it's coming to council and things like that is as, as we get, um, we get audited, we get you know, if people are looking through this data, it's not like it's being ignored. So I guess what I would also, if this group is open to it, um, similar to Conservation Commission, as we get, um, you know, goals or tasks kind of coming down from council and we're starting to talk more about environmental issues and concerns, this would be a great group for if you would be um, willing to have us come back as initiatives come through like long range planning, and different environmental concerns that are coming up that we're looking at towards ordinances or looking at different um, requirements within the town that we would love to have the support of this group as we're kind of moving that through or feedback from this group saying, well, you didn't really think about this, right? I think that's all key. And unfortunately, I haven't been to this group before. I think this is really helpful for me because when I think about these things, I think about Conservation Commission. We talk about, I, I go to um, all the Transportation Committee meetings. We have Sustainability Committee meetings. I go to 
it's um it's always great to kind of have um to vet these through committees right so as we start looking at environmental not just keeping it within what I consider maybe the environmental, this is one of the other groups I think that would be really instrumental in helping um, focus and maybe direct some of these initiatives too, if you guys are willing to, for that. Yeah, I, I uh, like those comments uh, from Angela and I think that uh, you know she and Robin and some of the comments that have been made are, you know, are really trying to get at the point where we see these these sort of flags, you know, these warning signs of things that are indicating an environment that is under stress. I mean, this used to be a community of farmers and diggers. You know, how much more, air, how much arable land is left in Scarborough? I mean, I keep going back to with our bond salesman who was here this summer who said that, you know, we need to be paying some attention to our bond rating because a lot of the value of our town and our ability to, to take, you know, to take on debt is related to uh, continuing development. And there is only 24% of the area of the town today that is developable. So, so I don't think, I don't want to get on a soapbox, but I, I, I don't think we really have our arms around it. I think that we've got plenty of, plenty of signs of difficulty. I mean, people drove through the flooding or got stopped on their way home from Christmas shopping a couple of weeks ago. We had a, a gas line that was exposed on Route One. I mean, I I just don't know what what you know more warning signals there can be. Now this gets a little bit off the page of, uh, from the standpoint of the health of our waters, but uh, it is it, it's a huge part of being more concerned about environment. And if we were to really take a magnifying glass and study our comprehensive plan today you know it's in there but how much of it is really actionable and how much of it is actually going to help us as a countervailing force uh, to to balance uh, development um, you know I, I the thing that one final point I'll make is that just there's a even for the existing land that we have uh, so much of it is already has a very high water table right I mean everywhere you dig and Town, there's water except where I used to live, and you had to go 300 feet to find a well. But, but in general, there's four, you know, and, and even all the development projects, a lot of what they talk about uh, in terms of radiation are, you know, retention ponds and things like that, in order to, you know, make sure we're not disrupting waterways. So, I, anyway, that's, a, you know, kind of a long run with a short slide, but I, I just don't, I don't think we are. Uh, educated enough, aware enough, or focused enough to do something about it to try to get specific from a from a policy standpoint or even a even a continued enforcement uh, and uh, effectiveness standpoint in these various efforts that are charged with with monitoring the health of our, of our waters uh, and shores and beaches. Anyway, let's see. I'm kind of looking at <laughs> No, Sorry, Don, around. you're not saying to leave it alone. You're you're saying, Don, are you saying that we don't want to explore this any further? Or no, I'm saying we need to do something to sort of uh, you know connect the dots and to you know get it get it uh, to a level of discussion, you know, where the real decisions are made. You know, the long range planning committee, uh, the ordinance committee. The, <clears throat> go on and on, but I mean, these are the, the real policy making committees that folks, you know, in the areas where we really take specific <clears throat> steps. I know Angela's right in the middle of this, you know, 90% of her job is focused on that. So, uh, and I, I don't know, just up until now, we've done it kind of once a year, we check the box and we get the, you know, the permit and each each group that spoke today does their own little checking mm -hmm. the boxes. And, you know, what happens someday when all those boxes don't get checked and we're saying, geez, you know, we never really connected the dots on all this. Okay, so what you're saying then, what I'm hearing is you're not ready to change policy or make policy on this. We need to actually, we're more in the exploratory phase still. Uh, more education, we'd love to see what yep. else. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, maybe talk to, to somebody in communications or click, get back to the council and say, we'd just like some some focus and awareness on this. I know one of the areas that Tom mentioned in his mes message, Tom Hall and his message to, to the town about key focus areas for 2023 is uh, implementation of the comprehensive plan. 
well, I think that's that's good. Uh, and there are environmental parts of that, but is it weighted equally or you know fairly with uh, <clears throat> with the big D and the big development? Got you know, it. So, that's Thank you for clarifying. Thank you. Plan is that it's not prescriptive and it's really open. <laughs> I love it. it yep. It's it's open to a uh, <clears throat> to a bum rush, but um, if the conservation commission wants to establish itself, just with enough <clears throat> initiative on their part, they can really yeah. move the ball in that direction. Yep. So, yeah. so here's the question. So is this something that the Conservation Commission should be tackling? Because it seems like we're all in agreement that water quality and ensuring water quality is a big issue. And it covers a lot of different areas. We don't necessarily own it. It doesn't sound like you guys own it either. Does anybody own it? I guess maybe our recommendation should be that the town look into having a committee that's just focusing on water quality rather than everyone trying to do a little bit of it. Well, the, the reason I joined the committee, I have no professional or, you know, other than I can row a boat and sail a <laughs> boat and get a motor, I can probably do that too. But uh, the town of Scarborough has the ocean the waters. Oh. It's its greatest mm -hmm. asset. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, not to step on any toes, there's no second place. Yeah. So, and everything flows there. So if I thought coastal waters and harbor, that's got to be important, you know, kind of thing. And I'm just approaching it as a mm -hmm. novice and somebody who cares about it. I just say we put it on the table for next agenda. We yeah. Talk about it. We've got the data we needed, and then we can push it to whoever we need to. Okay. I don't think we need to make a decision tonight. And it doesn't really. Is it going to fall on our lap partially because it is coastal waters? But does it fall on the town engineer's lap? Does it fall on the community service lap? Does it fall on the center? I think it falls in a lot of places. I just think that you know, start the discussion of yeah. who tests the water, for what, mm -hmm. and are we overlapping? We know that there's obviously a communication of overlap, so now we just move on. We deal that in there at that point. That's a great point. Can I make um, one final comment? Sure. My one final comment would be instead of forming a new committee, water quality committee. Um, I, I feel like water quality or the environmental issues are everyone's job, not one committee's job. So I would suggest that it's some type of joint commission where it's a member from each of uh, the existing committees, conservation commission, clean, clean harbor, clean water and harbors, long range, that's ordinance committee, so that it's existing committees that get together and talk about it. And then it goes back to each committee and it becomes an agenda item monthly for each committee. Just my two cents. Okay. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks, Robin. Yeah, Liam, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that unfortunately we are maybe wrap up because absolutely we, yeah we, when we wrap up we have to deal with the fee issue. It's got to be done right now. Yeah. Because it's got to go to it, it's town okay. council next month. Yeah. So it's got to be part. I'll make a point here. here. What's that? Be, oh, can, huh. can you stay for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, I can say. <clears throat> I have one public comment too. Which, uh, they, they, I don't know if we need a motion or not. Why don't we put water quality as an agenda item, old business for next meeting? And yeah, let's move ahead to the fee. And now we can, we can adjourn that. Yeah, because you're right. We do have the committee. Hard six to stop. Well, the other one. We, we have a few of us out there. Oh, okay. okay. Shellfish yeah. is right behind oh, us. I'm like, I like they can stay up for yeah. another 30. Okay. Yeah, they can, they can stay up for a few minutes. If we got to be here for the two now, they will try to get up early. Yeah, we don't want to go too far. Then. But uh, otherwise, we want to thank everyone for, for showing up here and joining. Really appreciate it. We've gotten some great insight, some great perspectives. Really appreciate that. Robin, joining us via Zoom, really appreciate that. And um, we look forward to working with you guys. Sounds like everyone's doing some great work and, you know, it all needs to be encouraged. It's all good. Thank you. Thank you. So if you guys want to leave, we're going to talk about some other stuff that's not really relevant to you. So you don't have to stick Do around for that. you want to leave this running? I don't mind uh, waiting until the next, you say in the next group. You're welcome to stay. Yeah. You can stay. Yeah, I don't think we have anyone else who's on. So. Oh, do you want me to? I'm good. Uh, unless the shellfish people need it. No. No? Okay. All right, so... Um...